Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Emily from GoWP. Welcome to today's webinar with Miriam Schwab on how going headless and serverless can have a major impact on your site's speed and security. I'm really excited about this webinar because I don't know much about headless and serverless uh, websites. So I am going to be learning probably at least as much, if not most likely more than the rest of you on this webinar. So it's going to be great. Um, really quick, I just want to say a couple words about GoWP for those of you who are not familiar. Um, and let me just share my screen here. So we have our nice slide. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, at GoWP, we are a team that is devoted to helping agencies grow by providing exceptional outsourced WordPress services. Um, agencies that partner with GoWP are able to focus on the low touch, high value work that helps them grow because they can depend on GoWP to take care of the high touch, low value work that disrupts their day. Things like website maintenance, um, those never ending content edit requests that come in from clients at all times of day and night that you don't have time to get to and you have to drop everything to take care of them. <clears throat> um, on top of that, we have recently launched a new service to help agency owners struggling to get their page build outs done on time and within budget. And that is GoWP Page Builds. So with GoWP page builds, you get a dedicated WordPress developer ready to build your page designs. Um, with page builds, you are guaranteed a minimum of two hours dev time a day, daily progress reports, and an account manager ensuring that your specifications are being followed. We even work in your project management tools. So whether you use Asana or um, Trello, whatever it is, we'll work right in there. <clears throat> so it's, it's a pretty cool new service. Go check it out. You can um, read more about it, learn more at gowp.com slash page dash builds. And if you have any questions about partnering with GoWP and how we can help your agency, feel free to email me um, or reach out to me uh, in the Facebook group if you're watching there, emily at gowp.com. I also wanted to tell you about our Facebook group, which I just mentioned, um, the GoWP niche agency owners. So if you're here in the Zoom call um, and not a member, we'd love to have you. This is a community of agency professionals who either already serve a niche market or would like to niche down. Uh, we are broadcasting this webinar live in the group now, and the recording will also be available afterward to watch there as well. So go check out the group, request to join if you haven't already, and we'll let you in. We'd love to have you. So you can see the um, <clears throat> URL there. It's the facebook.com slash groups slash niche agency owners. So we'd love to have you there. Um, <clears throat> moving on to why we are here for Miriam's webinar. So a few quick notes about the webinar. I will be watching the chat both here in the Zoom uh, room, I guess, and also in the Niche Agency Owners Facebook group. So if you have any questions, just throw them out and I will get them over to Miriam, no problem. So just let us know in the chat. Um, <clears throat> I see that the Zoom chat is already working. If we could just test out over on Facebook, let's see, we've got it working over there too. So hi, Jason. Hi, Kaylin. Um, glad you all are watching. So everything's working. Looks like we're ready to get started. So let's get to Miriam. <laughs> um, Miriam founded and built a leading global open source web development company. She taught herself how to code and became one of the top thought leaders and influencers within the Israeli startup and open source spaces. And that was just all over the last 12 years. So she's a real, real expert here. I'm excited to have her. Um, really glad she decided to do this webinar with us. Uh, and then moving forward in mid 2016, Miriam founded Stratic. So Miriam's lifelong passion for helping people and doing good in the world has translated into Stratic's mission and technology, making web security simple and accessible to all. So hello, Miriam. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Um, would you like to, I guess we can just go ahead and get started. I'll throw it on over to you now and you can take over. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Um, if people have questions, so like Emily said, um, you'll, you'll be watching uh, the chats and I'm happy to answer questions while I'm presenting. Um, I like to do that because it keeps the format more conversational and that's just me hearing my voice in a monologue format so, so much. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, if everybody yeah. just throw, throws their questions out when they have them and I'll, and I'll get them to Miriam, no problem. Okay, great, all right, so here we go. Okay, 
Mm. And we are seeing your screen. Looks good. Yeah, we good? Okay. Yes. So uh, who am I? Uh, I'm the CEO of Stratic and the web development agency that I founded prior to Stratic is called Illuminea. And um, I did that for many years. And my work there is what led me to the concept for Stratic and eventually uh, transitioning away from agency work into um, building this product. Uh, I've been in the world of WordPress for 14 years and I organized five WordCamps in Israel. Uh, I've spoken at a lot of WordPress related conferences and um, I am a mother. And if you wanna get in touch with me, a uh, very easy way is to tweet me um, at Miriam Schwab or any other way that you can find out to contact me. And I'm always happy to hear from people. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm, we're, I'm just showing you this because um, I just want us all to understand how huge the WordPress uh, market is. Uh, Yoast keeps on top of the metrics related to WordPress's market share. And um, the last stats that he posted were in June. And just in June alone, I think that's what it was, WordPress grew another 2%, which is uh, larger than Joomla's market share. So it's growing at a steady, very impressive pace. And it's, um, it's, not, it's like the message here is WordPress is, is not going anywhere. Um, however, WordPress has uh, some major issues that um, a lot of people have experienced. And, and um, those pain points tend to be related to speed, security, scalability, time needed to maintain, and things like that. That's why there's um, impressive companies like GoWP to help with the, reduce the pain of related to those things. Um, a recent developer survey showed that WordPress, out of, they checked a lot of different types of software that people are using. WordPress was the most, uh, uh, in the most lab dreaded and wanted platforms and uh, WordPress was the most uh, dreaded. <laughs> so that's um, an unfortunate uh, result of the study. So on the one hand, WordPress is growing. On the other hand, um, developers find it uh, very challenging and frustrating to work with and not appealing. So, so why? Uh, because WordPress has these recurring issues um, and pain points related to speed, security, by scaling, what I mean is um, if you suddenly have an influx of traffic, uh, you ran a campaign or just so it's like a pleasant surprise or an unpleasant surprise, meaning too many bots or some kind of DDoS attack, even a low level one, it can impact the performance of your website and slow it down or even crash your servers. Um, and for developers also, it's perceived that to be a legacy platform. Uh, WordPress just celebrated 17 years, which is very, very impressive. And um, it's, you know, like uh, that first graph showed, it's not going anywhere, but at the same time, uh, it is built on what's perceived to be legacy types of um, technology. So with the underlying LAMP stack, the Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP stack, and, um, you know, uh, that being the underlying architecture, it's, it's starting to show its age. And not only is that, a cool or lack of cool factor, but also is what impacts these other, these other pain points. So there's this trend towards what's called static uh, web, website building. Um, you may have heard about it. Uh, it has some other names, headless, also the Jamstack. Um, the Jamstack is a term that was coined by a company that's really trying to lead the charge on this um, static website development movement. Um, they're called Netlify. And the Jamstack is meant to come in opposition to the LAMP stack. So, you know, LAMP stack, Jamstack, they kind of sound the same. Um, and the Jamstack stands for, LAMP is, like I said, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Jam is JavaScript, APIs, and markup. And um, it's meant to be, in some ways, a more elegant and simple way of deploying websites and web applications and a more, a more modern approach. So uh, it's, it's a huge trend that's catching on among a lot of developers and they're very excited about it. And um, like um, this writer wrote on CSS tricks, uh, for people in the development community, static site generators are a popular choice over traditional content management systems like WordPress. By comparison, static sites are usually lightweight, highly configurable, fast, easy to use, and can be deployed almost anywhere. So um, it's, you know, that's the general messaging around this trend of the static and the headless that it's, it's light, it's fast, it's easy to configure, it's easy to develop on and things like that. Um, just by the way, this is, 
is not obviously like any like like most trends or most uh, uh, most opinions about things. There's different opinions about this. Meaning, it starts off. For example, what often happens with with uh, static or Jamstack types of projects that are not running on WordPress, um, standard WordPress, which I'm going to get to, they they start off in a more simple format, but as they try to add dynamic functionality that WordPress has, it starts to become more complex. So we'll we'll revisit that. So so what is what why are speed and security such pain points in the world of WordPress? So uh, as you can see, the size of WordPress websites is growing. This time span is four years. And um, it just makes sense. Websites are more interactive, more dynamic. We use, let's say, more images. We're not always careful about our images and optimizing them and things like that. We'll often, uh, in this world of page builders, the goal is to get the site to look pretty, some, very often without consideration um, regarding, well, how did we get there, right? There can be a lot of extra code and extra, and extra queries happening and that slows down websites. Uh, what's interesting is that the WordPress community seems to be getting better at keeping, making their, web, their WordPress websites not too slow. And um, what I mean is these stats here, you can see the arrow's down, but it's a good thing, meaning time has gone down over four years. Now, the last time I ran uh, this this type of comparison so this compares july 2016 to july 2020 last time i compared um sites had gotten much slower so i think what we're seeing is like a trend of speed uh page load speed um going up meaning it's taking more seconds to load a page and it's kind of plateauing and people are are i think maybe hosting companies are getting better at it and um maybe website builders as well Maybe also this has to do with the internet becoming um, better at delivering content. I'm not sure. So, but it's still quite a lot of time that's being taken to load. Although this isn't so bad, this is the median, but it still means there's a lot of sites that are taking a long time. So why, why is a WordPress site often um, slower than a statically generated site? So here's a little diagram to kind of explain that. So static websites are kind of like, we're going full circle back to the year 2000. <laughs> when I started building websites, I was building static websites, um, which was I, HTML files and CSS, and I would edit them and I would FTP them up to the server. And when someone wanted to see a page, that page was ready to go and it was just served to them. So what happened after that was that people like myself started to look for ways to make content management easier rather than editing page by page, which was crazy as sites got bigger. Um, and content management systems like WordPress came around and they were amazing because you could update your sidebar and it would be applied across the site, right? And you could, and you could edit your content in a very user-friendly, like WYSIWYG type of editor. All of that is powered by a database where the content is stored. And so essentially, instead of this scenario where the pages are pre-rendered and just here you go. So this is what's happening with uh, dynamic CMS like WordPress where we say, show me the site and then it has to query the database and it has to process PHP and it actually generates the pages on the fly for the user as they're requesting them. Those pages are virtual and don't exist. So they're not pre-rendered. Um, and that was fine and actually quite amazing for a long time. Um, but as websites became more complex and we're trying to do more with them and we're adding more dynamic functionality type, you know, interactive types of functionality to it and visual aspects, it's hard for the servers to keep up with that. And um, so just by virtue of that being the architecture and that being the process to generate a page and deliver it to a user, uh, that's just almost always going to be slower than a page that is already ready and just needs to be served up to the browser. Yeah, we have um, Zach over in the Facebook chat. He said that it, he mentioned HTTP2 and PHP7 have a lot to do with that change. Oh, that's probably true. That's a really good point. Yeah, and WordPress recently made um, PHP 7.2 the lowest supported version of PHP, mm, right. which is a really good change. Um, the CTO of Stratic is um, someone named Zev Sarasky, and he's the co-creator of PHP. Uh, he... Uh, worked on PHP 3 and has since been one of the leaders in the PHP project. And um, he gave, just FYI, he gave a really interesting talk at WordCamp Europe, um, the last one. 
uh, about what's that, what's coming up in, work, in PHP 8. And um, there's a lot of interesting speed improvements. I recommend that anyone who's interested in, in learning about that, go check out his talk uh, on WordPress TV, or I think it's also on YouTube. If you look for um, Zev Sarasky, Z-E-E-V um, Sarasky, uh, PHP 8. Uh, it's a really interesting talk, in my opinion, oh. but I also find those types of things interesting. So yeah, I'll, you know, I can, I'll go search out that link and I'll share it with everybody. <laughs> okay, so, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, so this is this is what we have going here, and even with these improvements, HTTP two and and PHP seven, uh, that process is still going to be slower. Um, what? Why are there so many security issues with WordPress? So you, if any of you are fo follow, you know. Um, the security landscape in WordPress, you will see that almost on a near daily basis, there's some kind of plugin vulnerability that's uh, publicized. And, um, and generally, it's a plugin that's installed on many sites, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. And so what that means is that whenever that happens, the window between when the uh, plugin vulnerability is announced and everyone patches it is a very nice window of opportunity for the hacker bots who are automated and are fed these vulnerabilities, know what to look for, and then just ping sites until they can get through. So um, in terms of CMS infections, this is a study published by Security. They do it um, pretty much every year. And this is a comparison between 2018 and 2019. So you can see, I mean, obviously also WordPress has a much larger market share, but it's also uh, highly attacked because it's a great ROI for an attacker. Um, Basically, I think it's something like one, one in every three sites these days or is a WordPress site. So if you keep pinging them, one of those sites is going to be WordPress and one of those sites may very likely be running um, something that's outdated and, and not secure. So this is basically the attack surface of your standard uh, WordPress website. So you've got um, Apache, right, as part of the LAMP server or, or Nginx, but it's something and that can get outdated and have vulnerabilities. PHP and MySQL, Dev himself will tell you how PHP can have vulnerabilities. Um, these, these, this level can have vulnerabilities. WordPress itself, um, core WordPress software is secure. It's, um, but sometimes even there, there's security vulnerabilities that are, are discovered and then patches are published, so there. And then of course, um, in an ideal world, there would only be four plugins installed in a WordPress site, but I'm sure many of you have seen what WordPress sites actually look like in terms of how many plugins are installed. Generally more than four. I read somewhere, I read in one place it's like an average of 20. I read somewhere else it can something like 40. But each plugin is a piece of software that uh, could be badly coded and then also at some point could have a vulnerability. So it's a lot of moving parts and a lot of layers that need attention um, to keep patched and secure. And when you're running a WordPress website, you're essentially running, uh, you're always running the engine, right? So what you've got in a WordPress architecture is you've got your front end, which is what the users see, and that's all you want the users to see, but attached to it is always that engine. It's always there, it's always running, and it's always ready. Even if a WordPress site is not being edited frequently, that is always there. Um, and and that's where, where the security issues uh, come in, and then of course also the uh, speed. Oh, so we need a lot of alpha gel for that. When you when you look these days for um, virus icons or anything, it's all about Corona. Like there's not even just like I'm sure computer viruses <laughs> anymore <laughs> or alpha gel. Like I'm like, well, that's handy for everyone who's using that in their presentations these days. So um, yeah. <laughs> so okay, but having said that, WordPress has many advantages, and that's why it continues to grow, which is that it's an it's open source software which is a huge benefit. Um, it means that um, in many ways that makes WordPress future-proof. It has, it's, uh, it's not proprietary, you're not depending on a few people sitting in a room creating the software and maintaining it for you. It's a huge ec ecosystem around it. It's familiar. Um, in our work, we see very, very often companies that are trying to implement uh, this shiny new static approach to things, which means throwing out the WordPress websites and rebuilding the sites with this, this static approach. And then what happens is the developers and the engineers in the company are happy because they're proud of their cool tool. And then the marketers are frustrated because they can't edit the content the way that they're used to, or even sometimes at all. Um, 
just because of the way that these static sites are built, there's different CMSs and they have to be tied into every component of the front end of the site. And if you want to build a new landing page, you need a developer. It slows marketers down, they get frustrated, and then they go off to the side and they create what one company told us, guerrilla WordPress websites, <laughs> because they just want to do their job. So they're not going to wait for engineering to help them with their content management and they spin up their own WordPress websites because they're familiar with it. It gives them a lot of um, power. They can, it has a lot of integrations and they can do a lot with it. And so it allows them to do their job. And, and so there's that familiarity. And then the tooling is of course the plugins and everything around the ecosystem and the integrations. So what, you, what happened, what is happening is you, there was this movement of uh, Jamstack, Headless, you know, uh, is static so cool and shiny everyone should use it to people trying to build sites with it and going well just like wordpress isn't the right tool for everything so that's the same with static um, and something like this they kind of um they come to terms with even though they don't love wordpress it's still uh very portable and very extensible and it's familiar and does the job and there's like little friction in doing what you want your website to do which is allow you to edit this, the content and publish it and you know create new content areas very easily so so there's this kind of uh people are coming back towards wordpress and some here's just some examples like uh it's what's interesting is github so github is like the developer tool github has their own static hosting called git pages and even so they decided to they had moved their blog to a static site generator called jekyll and they decided to move it back to wordpress so um yeah, so WordPress is still great. But what if we could have WordPress and static and enjoy both worlds? That would be awesome because you would get all of those great things I just mentioned about WordPress and then all of the great things that these developers and users of static love related to speed, security, and performance. So what's driving that within the WordPress ecosystem? Um, a lot of it has to do with the WP REST API, which um, enables users to use WordPress just as a backend, just as a content management system. And then it generates JSONs, which can then be kind of sucked in to a, what they call a decoupled front end. So the front end is not directly tied into WordPress. And that's one way to get the content management abilities of WordPress with a faster, uh, headless uh, front end. The challenges with that approach are that it makes it much more complicated to develop a site. You need to have both uh, someone on the WordPress side and then someone on the front end, usually some kind of React developer, depending on which uh, framework people use. And it means that you don't get to um, enjoy a lot of the benefits of the WordPress infrastructure, which is I installed a plugin that helps me create a beautiful photo gallery and now I have a beautiful photo gallery that I can see on the front end of my, of my site immediately and then I can edit it in WordPress and I'll see those results on the front end. That, that is called a monolithic architecture and a lot of developers look down on it but that's what offers those capabilities whereas if you decouple it then you could move around your sidebar, your widgets or whatever, and it will have no impact on the front end of a decoupled headless site. So this approach does have some advantages, but you lose out on a lot of the really great benefits of running WordPress site. Oh, and needless to say, themes won't work in this approach also. You have to build this front end separately. So, um, Right, so I mentioned about how static is all of these and ironically modern, it was from the 2000s, but now we're doing it again as if it's really cool. Just the difference in the approach is that we're doing it with more modern tooling and in a more efficient way. So, so what are the pros and cons of using WordPress um, in a static format? And in terms of which static format I'm talking about, it's more like, um, so there's the headless approach, which I just described. And then there's another approach, which is what Stratic has adopted. Um, which is you can use your WordPress site as usual and enjoy all the benefits of that monolithic architecture in terms of making changes in the back end and seeing them immediately in the front end. And then what we do is we run a publication process around that site and generate every single page so that it looks and acts exactly the same, but every page is pre-rendered and you don't have the underlying um, issues related to the, to the WordPress architecture. There's no LAMP architecture, there's no database queries, 
all of those layers of potential vulnerabilities are not there. The plugins are left behind. And because the pages are pre-rendered, they're very fast. So, but what are the pros and cons of this type of approach um, to running a static WordPress site? So the pros are, of course, you can use WordPress as you're used to. Um, it's not decoupled, so you get the front end. Um, it's secure. So in our case, the reason that it's secure is that uh, Stratix platform is end-to-end. -end. So you have your WordPress website, let's say it exists, you migrate it over to Stratix, just like you would with any other hosting company. Um, it sits in a, in a container, um, which means that every website is kind of in its own dedicated server. But the other, so that means that there's good resources there for the website. But the other advantage of having it in container is that when it's not in use, it spins down. So I mentioned that when you're running a WordPress site, the engine is always there. And that means that it's always exposed, um, potentially. If the WordPress engine is in this container, and that container also, you need to be authenticated by Stratic, but also it spins down when not in use, it essentially doesn't exist unless you need it to. So when you want to edit the site, this container spins up and you edit your site and then you click our button and it generates the static version. Uh, when you're finished editing, it spins down. So that's even another layer of security. Like why do we have to have these WordPress website engines running 24 seven when they're needed a fraction of that time? Um, the site's fast. First of all, even the WordPress site can feel faster because uh, the only traffic or, or use of the WordPress site are the site owners. So there's no load issues or anything like that. But of course, the statically generated site um, feels very fast because every page is pre-rendered. Also, with Stratic, every page is pre-rendered and served up through a CDN, through a content delivery network. Um, we're built out on AWS's Amazon Web Services architecture. So we use their CDN, which is called CloudFront. And the advantage of running this type of WordPress site with a CDN is that in your standard WordPress architecture, the only types of files you can serve up through a CDN are static files. And in your standard WordPress architecture, the only static files are images, or let's say you have some video files, um, documents, CSS, and JavaScript. But the most important pages on your site, which are the content pages, they are virtual, right? Like I described before. So they can't be served up through CDN. And so what happens is you have your server, let's say in Texas, and then you have someone in the UK who wants to visit your site. They will get the images served up to them from an endpoint that's an edge location in the CDN that's near them. But in order to view the content, they still have to go across the ocean and access your server in Texas. So with the static, statically generated site, all of those elements, the entire site um, is just static files and it all can be served up. So it's faster everywhere um, and it's scalable. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I was running my agency, we would sometimes um, be the, our, our customers would be launching campaigns of different kinds and we'd say to them, give us a heads up. We want to know we need to provision more resources for your servers, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes despite what we did, it still was more traffic than expected or need and the resources weren't enough. And sometimes that would cause issues um, or unexpected, or you don't always get a heads up when there's traffic coming to your site. And then that also, you can't even do anything about it. And, and then you have issues with that. Um, so with a, a statically generated site, uh, it's in some ways, basically infinitely scalable. Like you never have to worry about that if, the files need to be served up more, they'll just be served up more. That's just how that architecture works. We have one customer on Stratic now that's um, cyber security related, and they discovered some uh, really high profile types of vulnerabilities and they published them. And they got tons of media exposure, tons, like Wired and I think Bloomberg and Twitter was going crazy, like retweeting everything about them and sending tons of traffic to their site where they had the report about these vulnerabilities. We didn't even know. We, the only reason we realized was because we saw that their resource usage had spiked and we're like, I wonder what's happening. But there wasn't even a blip, nothing. And I'm, telling, I'm talking about like major spike. I think their traffic increased like 50 times <laughs> and um, nobody felt it. And that's not what it would have been like in the past. And in the past, if we were managing that type of website, they would have been complaining, get more resources and we'd be frantically like, in touch with hosting companies to try to figure out what to do. And in this case, we all just slept fine and it just kept running. 
Yeah, so, I think I mean, it reminds me of a story of somebody, I think someone in one of our uh, Facebook group members who had a client featured on a morning news program and, uh, and they crashed the site because they didn't know that it was happening. No, you know, there wasn't that give me a heads up or anything. <laughs> so exactly. yeah, it happens. Yep. Totally. And that's a common story. And that's especially when you want your site not to crash. Yeah. Right. Like all this valuable traffic is coming and then it's down and you're like, Oh Lord. So, um, this doesn't happen with static sites. Um, now obviously, like I said, nothing is perfect, whether it's, um, static, you statically built sites using static site generators, um, or using WordPress. So when you have the static version of the site running, uh, you can't depend on, um, certain types of dynamic functionality that would you would normally not even worry about on a WordPress site, the types of functionality where it has to communicate with a database, because there is no database, right? We left everything behind. It's basically everything that was published to the front end is now there to be served up, but anything like, let's say, WooCommerce, um, WooCommerce depends heavily on the database for the shopping cart. We actually do have one site running that's using WooCommerce for the catalog functionality, and that works fine, because it's just, they're using it to create content. Um, but if they had a shop, had shopping cart functionality um, and a checkout system that was depending on WordPress, that wouldn't work on, stat, on Stratus. And the same with um, membership types of sites where, uh, you know, you have uh, gated content and users have to log in using their, like some kind of WordPress user and only then do they get access to the content. That user is database driven and that won't work on a static site. Also, uh, while we at Stratic try to keep the user experience as much in line as possible with the native WordPress experience. So, uh, for example, we support scheduled posts, we do support password protected pages, and you just use WordPress the same as usual. The user experience is different because you log into WordPress, you make your changes there, you publish them to WordPress, but your static version of the site does not yet have those changes. You need to click one more button, which we add to the dashboard. And that button then identifies everything that's been published and deploys it to the static version of the site. And that publication process is not like the standard one where with WordPress, you'll edit a page, you'll click, click publish and you'll see it. Here, there, it's a bit of a process and it can take a couple of minutes until the new content appears on the WordPress site. And it's only a few minutes, but it can feel like a lot to people who are used to you know, the instant publication. Um, Having said that, some of our users really like that the WordPress site is in a way a, sta a staging site and that they can make changes there, test them, check them, um, run them by you know, management so that they can review it. And only once everyone's on board with whatever changes are being made, then they deploy them. Or also if they have teams in different time zones, this is another scenario that I was just talking to the customer about. Uh, she's in Israel, like me, and then they have a team in New York. She goes to sleep. The New York team has made all sorts of changes to the site. She wakes up and she's head of marketing and she's like, why did you do that? <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Now I have to go and fix everything or whatever. And this way they would make the changes, save them, she would wake up next morning, review them, and then publish it to the static version of the site. So pros and cons, but it's just, it's a different user experience. So in a way it feels like a struggle. And like I mentioned, there's no database. Um, some other examples of database driven functionality are form plugins, comments, search, okay, e-commerce, memberships, forums, Ajax get requests. Ajax get requests are like um, some types of infinite uh, load where, you know, you go to the, but you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it shows you a bunch of blog posts and then it, you know, it loads, you, it loads five more for you. That's actually pinging the, the database. Um, Oh, that's, so that's also infinite scrolling, um, redirections, multi-language plugins, password protected pages. So all of these types of things, um, if you were just to try to run a WordPress website on your own and then publish it to static, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be supported. Um, but at Stratic, as we onboard more and more customers, also based on our uh, familiarity with the, with the ecosystem, we I've identified what um, is very commonly used and um, would hold users back and we develop our own native support for it. So when our users click that button, aside from it perfect, generating a perfect replica of the site, which is very complicated, I can tell you that since I've been working on this product for quite a few years and it was hard to get that to happen in a decent amount of time and perfectly and without crashing the WordPress server. Just <laughs> that's behind the scenes. Um, 
we also do other things to support dynamic types of functionality. So for example, with regards to forms, we support contact form seven and gravity forms. Um, so for users that are using those plugins, then that's fine. The, the form on the static site will, will work as expected. Um, comments, so our users, if they have comments, they'll replace it with discuss or some other uh, third party commenting um, system, but we're working on developing our own commenting system that supports uh, just native WordPress and then our users don't have to do anything. For search, we roll out Algolia search for all of our users. So if someone has search bars on their site, um, when they do the publication process, we generate an Algolia index for them. Algolia is basically the best commercial search engine out there. Um, and then when the users search, it actually is pinging the Algolia um, index as opposed to the WordPress site. So our users get faster and better search actually. And we include that. Um, some types of e-commerce we support, but not WooCommerce, but like the headless types. So like Equid and that kind of thing. Memberships, we don't support. Forms, we don't support. With Ajax get requests and infinite scrolling, we have rolled out um, alternatives. Redirections, we support two plugins, one called Redirections, one called I can't remember what, and Yoast Redirections. We support WPML and Polylang. We also support password protected posts and we schedule and we support scheduled posts. So these are things that wouldn't normally work, but they do work on Stratus. Um, Relative dates is just something that we've seen. And just an FYI, if you want your site to run on Stratic, uh, don't have dates on posts that are like yesterday, right? Because that's dynamic. It should say August 4th. Um, so the benefit of what we're doing also, aside from those types of functionality that uh, wouldn't work out of the box, is that we live in an increasingly client-side world. So what that means is that there's actually a lot of tools that uh, provide dynamic like functionality without needing to depend on a database um, because they're JavaScript based. So first of all, all these types of tools will work fine. If you go to stratic.com, you'll see we have intercom running. We have HubSpot integration. Um, we were using MailChimp, but we're not anymore, but that works great. We have Google Analytics running. You can use a tool like Hotjar. All of these are JavaScript based, so they all work perfectly on a static site. Um, you can use Gravity Forms or Contact Form 7, but you can also build your own forms and then use form endpoint services. That um, is basically just like a snippet of code that you add to um, the form submit part. They all have instructions how to do it, but it's a um, very simple and useful solution for forms if you want. But you can also use third party forms, um, which you just embed in your site. And because the content, the form submission is submitted somewhere else, like let's say into HubSpot as opposed to through WordPress, then that also works fine. Comments, here's a bunch of you know, comment solutions um, that we've implemented for our customers on their sites. And so that works fine. Um, and then of course search. So people can use these search solutions if they want to generate their own static WordPress site. But like I mentioned, we have Algolia rolled into our offering. Um, and then headless e-commerce solutions can be used. Um, Equid has really great integration with WordPress and we've tested it quite thoroughly. So you can implement Equid on the WordPress site in our container and then publish the site as static. And it actually gives you um, a fast e-commerce site. Anyone running WooCommerce might have experienced uh, that it's, it can be quite slow. And um, Equid's really fast. It's a really great product. So I was very impressed with that. Um, in order to help people build static, what we call static ready WordPress websites, because um, you do need to keep in mind that there is no database. Um, so, so there's the functionality that we offer out of the box, and then there's tools that you can use instead um, to cover ground that we don't yet cover. We created a static tools directory on our site, um, which you can go visit and you can search by category of the types of functionality that you want or have on your site. And, you know, it was working based on that dynamic um, functionality, there's many other options out there and there's many more being released all the time because of this growing trend of the job stack and the static and headless um, websites. We also list here WordPress um, types of plugins that we've tested and, and are supported by Stratic. So you can see here Beaver Builder and um, the redirection plugins would be in there. Um, Elementor is supported. Uh, and all sorts of other uh, WordPress things that we just want to make sure that they work fine on Stratic. So basically, I, I uh, compare this to um, baking a cake. Uh, I don't know if any of you have done something like this, but let's say you have a cake recipe, a chocolate cake recipe, and it calls for white flour and white sugar and 
you know, oil and whatever, um, and let's say a bunch of eggs. And so you bake it and it looks like that and it tastes like that. Um, but then you want to make a healthy version. So you replace the, let's say half or three quarters of the flour with whole wheat flour. Um, we have this really good flour here that's 70, 70 percent flour. I don't know if you have that outside of Israel, but it's like it's health. It's mostly whole wheat, but it tastes like white. Anyways, <laughs> so I'll use that. And then, um, you know, demerara sugar or like a healthier sugar or a different kind of sweetener instead of just white sugar, maybe replace the eggs with applesauce, that kind of stuff. Um, and then in the end, the cake tastes the same, um, but my kids are eating a healthier cake. So that's kind of what you get when you generate a WordPress site as a static version. Like the end user who's visiting the site uh, has no idea that they're not visiting a WordPress site. Um, it looks and acts exactly the same. They go through the pages the same. Um, if there's infinite scrolling, that will happen as well. The forms will work the same. All of that is the same. Um, it might feel faster to them. It probably will. I just went to visit one of our customers. They're a Tel Aviv tech company. And um, he, he, they had built their site. Uh, they needed to get it up and running. So they just like, they built it with Elementor and it was taking like six seconds to load. And it was a huge pain point for them. And then they put it on Stratic and now it's less than two seconds. They didn't have to change any code. Um, so it's the same site, but it feel, it's much faster. And um, even the page source, if you look at the page source, we don't change any HTML. Our goal is that the WordPress site as it is, is not, is not manipulated or modified in any way so that um, if our users want to leave Stratic, they can just take their WordPress site as usual and go somewhere else. So there's no vendor lock-in. So the page source on the static site even looks exactly, exactly the same. It says WP dash content, you know, everywhere. If a hacker bot was trying to ping it, they would also identify it as a WordPress site, but there's actually no WordPress engine there. Um, and then what the hacker bots would find is that they can't get anywhere because there's no, there's no endpoints. There's no areas that they can breach. If you go to WP admin on the static site, you'll just get a 404 page. So um, that's also like, a, uh, you know, people do move their WP admin page to different URLs, but like that's another sign that, uh, that the site's not a WordPress site anymore. Um, it's kind of like a, a snapshot of the front end. So um, I'll just share this, this case study that uh, one of our customers did regarding speed. So um, they're a company called STL Metrics and their area of expertise is performance. That's what they work on with their customers and they were frustrated with the speed of their own site. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to not paying proper attention to your own, <laughs> your own web properties. We, did, we were like that in my agency. A little bit like that now, um, you know, like uh, we pay more attention to our customer sites than our own in many ways. So um, that was kind of the same thing here. And his site, uh, when he ran performance scores, if he had uh, 50 users simultaneously on the site, pages were taking 25 seconds to get delivered, which is very painful. And so then he onboarded to Stratic and ended up, he did load testing which was crazy. And that was, that was great about onboarding him because this is his thing. So he does load testing for customers for purposes of campaigns, growth, whatever, like I, like I spoke about earlier. So with 7,000 simultaneous users, um, every page was returned in under a half second. Um, so he went from 25 seconds to under a half a second and the site actually got faster with higher load. And that's a characteristic of CDN. Um, so it's the opposite of your standard WordPress configuration where more load means slower with a static site running on Stratic or another CDN, it will get faster, but like crazy fast. Um, so he was of course thrilled, we were thrilled and he wrote a case study which we published on our site on our blog if you wanna check it out. Um, and this is something that we always are hoping that we can track, but it also depends on our customers um, keeping an eye on it. But uh, he noticed an uptick in conversions since moving to Stratic. So he felt this is due to an improved customer experience. Even a small change in performance can influence your conversion rate, um, either positively or negatively uh, in this case. Thankfully, it was positive. And then with regards to security, um, with a site that has no none of the underlying layers of the processing server, et cetera, there's essentially not much to hack. I mean, it reduces the attack surface by something like 99.999 something percent. Um, 
because it's very, very hard to hack a static file. Um, we had one customer that we onboarded their site. They didn't even realize, but um, they hadn't updated properly and their site was full of malware. Some malware is pretty sneaky. Like you only see it if you go, you know, from Google or something like that. So he wasn't aware. Uh, but when we onboarded it, we, we found this malware that had infected the site. And um, I also saw that Google had delisted his site from the search results because Google doesn't want to have malware infected sites in the search results that could potentially harm their users. Um, so we onboarded the site to Stratic, published it as a static version, and then I submitted a, 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 a request, I can't remember what it's called, to re-add the site to their index. And you, you can do that after you clean up and say, we've cleaned it up. Now, what we did was we actually didn't clean it up. We left the malware in the original WordPress site in the container and published the static version of the site. So I wanted to see if Google would be able to pick up on that somewhere there had been malware. And um, nope, the static site was completely clean. The malware was left behind and um, the site was reinstated in Google's search index. So uh, even if your site is running um, vulnerable plugins in a, in, a, in a platform like Stratic, the container is not accessible to anyone who is not authenticated by Stratic and it shuts down when not in use. So they, you don't have to have that pressure to like always be updating just in case, because um, no, none of those hacker bots can access it. And even if there are some issues, once the site's statically generated, uh, they're left behind. I don't recommend leaving malware in WordPress sites, even in this type of configuration. It was just like a, a test that I did for my own, my own interest. So uh, here's some of the functionality that we do support. Oh yeah, we also support AMP now. Um, Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. So uh, that was awesome. Thank you, thank you Miriam. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot. I thought it was really interesting. I know. Um, I'll, I'll say this first. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat, um, either on Facebook or Zoom, and we will get those to Miriam. But I, I also just wanted to say I know that um, when we initially talked with you, I think uh, Brad had tried putting our site on Stratic and he was amazed by how yeah. fast that, I mean, we don't have a super complicated site as it is, but right. we're always looking at load times and that kind of thing and figuring out ways to make it as quick as possible. And he was like, it was incredible. I mean, he was floored by, by how fast it was. So it's, it's pretty cool. I love hearing that kind of feedback. It's so yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I know when we talked about it with our, uh, with our technical director as well, he was like, yeah, I can see a lot of benefits to, to that kind of, that kind of hosting and why it would, be of interest to people, especially like you were mentioning before, if it's a site that um, does viral campaigns and that kind of thing where you're gonna get spikes in traffic and they're not predictable and you don't you don't know exactly. So it's it's interesting and it's I, I learned a lot. I enjoyed this webinar a lot, so thank you. And I love the chocolate cake analogy. <laughs> I like bake a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> um, we didn't we did not have I don't nobody's putting any questions up. So it looks like you did get one plus one from uh, Jason over on Facebook for mentioning Joomla. He's a Joomla fan, so. Oh. <laughs> so you got one, one. There you go, Jason. For that. <laughs> um, and other than that, I am I'm just scrolling through here, making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I'll go ahead for those of you in the Zoom um, webinar, I'm going to send you the link to our Facebook group if you want to join because they're um, are some comments over there. Miriam's in the group. So if you do have questions after this, um, you can add them in there, tag Miriam, and um, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer them post-webinar as well. So oh, someone uh, did a Q&A question in the Q&A section. Oh, here. yeah, there it is. Someone named Dave. Yep. Okay. So any plans to support easy digital downloads? Um, if not, would Stratic work with something like Equid? So I so far, we don't have uh, support for easy digital, digital downloads on our roadmap. Um, we're very customer driven. So if we see a number of customers come on board and that they're using certain types of functionality, we'll then seriously consider adding it to our roadmap. Interestingly, we haven't gotten, I don't, I don't think almost anyone with um, easy digital, digital downloads, even though it's very popular. So um, yeah, so, so at the, for the moment, you know, right now it's not on our roadmap, but that could change. Um, Basically, all of the features that I listed that we support changed very quickly, meaning AMP, we rolled out support in like a day. 
<laughs> because there was a very important customer that needed it and we were like, all right, and then we did it. So uh, that's definitely how we work. Um, I mean, also we have larger plans, but we're very much customer driven. And then Equid does work on Stratic. And actually, so our community manager is someone named Zach Gordon, who many of you might be familiar with. Um, he runs the JS or WP conference and he, uh, he creates a lot of content and he's written, he wrote a book. Anyways, um, he did a video, which you can find on our YouTube channel about using how to use Equid with Stratic. So um, check it out. Uh, like I, like I said, Equid uh, is very impressive and the integration with, with WordPress in general is really great. And then Word, WordPress to static on Stratic was, was great. So um, yeah, go check that out. Also in general, Zach has created some very useful videos so uh, you can see them there. Um, hopefully they're helpful. Yep, hold, hang tight, Dave. I've got the link for you. So <laughs> here you go. Um, I think that should be the, the YouTube video link. How to set up Equid e-commerce with headless WordPress yes, on Stratic. Right. I'll yep, give that yep. over to our Facebook viewers as well. Um, Trevi says, great, present, great presentation. Thanks, Miriam. So thank you. This has been great. Glad you <laughs> um, thank you. I guess that's it. If no other questions are coming in, um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for uh, tuning in live. It always helps with getting you know, some questions, getting some engagement and all of that. So that's fantastic. I always love um, our live attendees. So thank you for that. And Miriam, thank you so much. This was really educational and um, it's been great. So like I said, if you have questions for Miriam after this, um, if you're watching this recording and you have questions, uh, head over to our Facebook group. She's in there. You can just tag her or put yeah. a comment on this uh, recording video there. and and she'll help you out. Um, so that's, that's it. So thank you so much, Miriam. This has been great. Yeah, thank you so much. I enjoyed doing this. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, I will see you all in the Facebook group if you're there. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye.